Hey everyone, it's AJ Stockwell back with another QuickBooks tutorial. And this time I'm using a new QuickBooks Online account that I set up that is just called Climb CFO YouTube. Climb CFO is my consulting firm and I'm starting to take on a handful of QuickBooks cleanup projects and other kind of QuickBooks consulting projects. So if you have any need for that, please feel free to reach out and we can see if there's a fit and if I can help you out. This video is actually inspired by a comment that I got on a YouTube video a couple of weeks ago where someone was talking about a bank reconciliation beginning balance error because a credit card payment had been deleted, but when they look at the register, they still see that the credit card payment is in there. So they were wondering what's going on there and how do we fix it? And I decided that I should make a video about this because this is actually a somewhat common problem that I've seen. The first thing I'm going to do is go over to the bank feed. And basically at a high level, what happens in this situation is a credit card payment is added both on the checking account side and the credit card side, and they're added as two different transactions. So that's how we end up with a duplicate. And then often they both get reconciled. I'll talk about what that looks like, how that happens. Um, and then the duplicate is discovered and deleted and one of the reconciliations gets thrown off. So let's jump into how this actually happens. So I've uploaded an Excel file here to add these fake transactions for both a credit card and a checking account. So I'm going to go ahead and categorize these. And it's actually pretty interesting. I created these accounts in the chart of accounts. Like I said, this is actually a brand new QuickBooks Online account. And QuickBooks recognized right away which account these transactions should go to based on the statement description that I had entered. Now, ideally, we will put a vendor for every transaction, every bank or credit card transaction, we want to make sure we're entering a vendor. But for the sake of this video and keeping it a little bit shorter, I'm not going to do that for all of them, but I do want to make sure that they are at least posted to the correct account. So I'm going to go ahead and actually just add all of these transactions. This is our credit card payment in question. So you can see I'm importing transactions from the credit cards bank feed and we have this payment it's coming from our chase account so i'll go ahead and accept all of these now quickbooks is prompting me to set up a couple of rules i'm not going to do that right now now i'm going to click over to the checking account and discerning eyes might have noticed that this number just changed this number of transactions i actually realized that i had an error in the file that I uploaded. So I went ahead and changed it a little bit and re-uploaded it. So I just showed you adding the transactions on the credit card side, and now we wanna add them for the checking account. You can see this in QuickBooks balance, indicates that minus 987.20, and that was the credit card payment that we added from the bank feed for the credit card. Because we said that that was funds coming from the checking account. And so if we go to our checking register, we see that in there. Now I'm going to quickly add all of these transactions again, or at least all but the credit card payment. Again, don't try this at home. Ideally, we would put a payee in each of these transactions and we would, you know, match up the account maybe to a more specific account or just confirm that it's going to the right place. I'll at least change this Facebook one to be advertising. And now with all of those selected, I will accept them. Now we are left with our credit card payment. So you can see that QuickBooks recognizes that match. It recognizes that this is already the same transaction we added from the bank feed for the credit card. And when we use the match function in the bank feed, it ties those together rather than, you know, posting a second duplicate transaction. 
Unfortunately, sometimes QuickBooks doesn't recognize a match and it will just prompt you to categorize or add a transaction. So I'm going to add this as its own transaction because maybe QuickBooks didn't recognize the match and we didn't realize that we already added it from the credit card side or maybe someone else did it and we didn't know that. But basically I'm going to add this as its own transaction. Now we're gonna go ahead and reconcile both accounts. And I'm starting to feel like this video is getting longer than I intended it to, so thank you for bearing with me. Hopefully this is helpful. So I'm gonna to go to the reconciliation tool and go ahead and reconcile that checking account. So I'm gonna enter the ending balance according to our bank statement, which we will say is this 9647.10 and ending date of the end of last month. Now, this is very important and this would actually be a great time to catch this error. So do you see this column with these green boxes? That means that these transactions were added from the bank feed. So QuickBooks has checked them off by default because it knows that those transactions definitely hit the bank because they came through the bank feed. However, we see this other credit card payment here, which is not selected and not indicated as coming through the bank feed. That's because QuickBooks does this for transactions that came from this account's bank feed. So this is transactions imported from the checking account's bank feed. And we'll see why that's crucial in a couple of minutes. At this point though, I would see this and I would recognize that this is a duplicate and probably delete this transaction or maybe I would delete the other one either way. However, we have now gotten to our correct ending balance. We've made sure that the payments and deposits match our bank statement and we're ready to go ahead and finish reconciling. And now we do the same thing on our credit card. We enter our ending balance and the statement closing date. And remember this is from the statement and then we go to start reconciling. Now very similarly, we see we have these green boxes and automatically checked off the transactions that we imported through the bank feed. That's something that really helps reconciliations go smoother. And then we have this other credit card payment that was imported from the checking bank feed that is not marked off. However, we see that the total charges and that payment match the credit card statement. We're at a zero difference and we are ready to reconcile. So now both of those accounts are reconciled. However, somewhere down the road, maybe we're looking at our register, maybe we just realized that our bank account balance is lower in QuickBooks than it should be. And we recognize that we have this duplicate transaction. We have two credit card payments here and we're looking at our checking register and we see that and we figure we can just delete this one that isn't reconciled. Or on the flip side, maybe we're wondering why our credit card balance is showing negative 753 in QuickBooks and we recognize this unreconciled duplicate payment. Now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just delete it because I know that it's a duplicate. And now our balance is all good for the credit card and all good for the checking account. However, the next time that we go to reconcile our bank account, it's telling us that it is off by the amount of that payment. If we click in here, it shows that that credit card payment was deleted, but we know that it had been entered. So how do we fix this? There are a couple of options. One would be to undo the original reconciliation and re-reconcile the account. That is actually what I would recommend, especially if it is just for the prior month and we're still kind of closing our books out. I would recommend undoing that reconciliation and then redoing it. Now I think that you have to either be an accountant user and I'm logged into an accountant console 
or maybe the master admin to undo a reconciliation. The alternative is to just mark that credit card payment as reconciled within the register. And we can do that simply by clicking into the transaction and clicking until we get to the R for reconciled and then save it. Now QuickBooks is gonna warn us because like I said, this isn't the most ideal way to mark it as reconciled. Marking it reconciled this way won't be properly reflected on a reconciliation report, but it will get the job done in terms of setting our beginning balance to the correct balance. So now when we go to reconcile, that error is gone. So to summarize what happened was we imported the same transaction from two different bank feeds, but we did it in a way where it entered the transaction twice rather than matching it up and acknowledging that it was the same transaction. Then we reconciled one of those on the checking reconciliation and the other one on the credit card reconciliation because QuickBooks recognized each of them as being from their relevant bank feed. After that, we discovered the duplicate and deleted it. And this caused one of those accounts to be thrown off from a reconciliation perspective. All we needed to do to fix it was acknowledge that the transaction in the other account should have been reconciled. Now, one last thing, if we go back to the bank feed, we see that the credit card payment is put back into the bank feed. So if you delete a transaction from the register that came from the bank feed, it is going to put it back into the bank feed. And we have a couple of options here. One thing is we could just exclude it at this point. We know that this credit card payment is posted to the checking account because it came through the Visa bank feed and we've now marked it as reconciled for the checking account. The other thing that we can do though, is match it with its correct transaction. And unfortunately, actually QuickBooks isn't even giving us the opportunity to do that. So in that case, I'm just going to exclude it. Now we have our correct bank balances for both accounts. We've imported all the transactions. We have reconciled our accounts and we should be all set. This video definitely ended up longer than I anticipated or meant for it to be, but if it was helpful, please give it a thumbs up, give it a like, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I am going to be posting more of these tutorials as well as talking about you know, accounting and bookkeeping and other finance topics in general. Thank you for watching.